All right, so welcome back everyone to a new batch of advanced SQL videos. Uh, let's see what this week will bring. I hope you're doing well. Um, let's see what advanced SQL has in store for us in the upcoming videos. Uh, this particular video will be a brief video because it will only touch uh, one touch on one particular topic, the bag and set operations that are part of SQL tables contain bags of rows. So you would probably expect that a language that deals with such data structures also provides the natural uh, bag algebra operations that uh, that are commonly known, namely the union, the intersect and the accept operation, the minus operation on bags. In SQL syntax, these are written as union all, intersect all, and accept all between two queries Q1 and Q2. These Q1 and Q2 are entire select from web blocks. So these union intersect and accept operations are occurring at the top level syntactically. Um, we will come back to that when I show you an overview of all the syntactic constructs in SQL and then you will find uh, where union, intersect, and accept are really um, having their place in the evaluation order. But for now, assume that Q1 and Q2, the left and right argument of these binary back operations, are entire select form web blocks. Um, to perform the union or the intersection or the minus, the accept operation between two such, uh, two such queries or two, two tables, computed by these queries, of course, the tables um, must match in their row types, the width of the, the number of fields must match and also the field types must be compatible because, for example, in the union operation, we will produce a combined result combining rows from the left, right, left hand and right hand side arguments. And if the, the participating and contributing rows do not match, we cannot produce a homogeneous coherent result of the union. And these, these um, uh, row type matching restrictions, of course, apply to all of these, uh, of these operations. In a bank or in a multi-set, uh, rows may occur multiple times. They have multiplicities, as the mathematicians would say. We may have duplicates in, these, uh, in the participating uh, tables. And these union all, intersect all, and accept all iterations, they respect these multiplicities. As you would expect, a true bag union will add the multiplicities of the rows contributed by Q1 and Q2. A row that occurs two times in Q1 and three times in Q2 will occur five times, two plus, plus three times in the result. And similar rules are being followed by the intersect all and accept all operations. For the latter, for accept all, multiplicities are subtracted, as you would probably expect, just as described in this paragraph on the slide. So um, we perform multiplicity subtraction. Of course, we will never undercut the zero here. So uh, there are no negative multiplicities for rows, uh, but otherwise we are just performing subtraction. For intersection, the semantics is that we produce the minimum uh, row count contributed by the left, left hand and right hand side arguments. Okay, so these would be the bag operations. If you remove the all modifier to all of these keywords and you end up with just union intersect except, you end up with the set versions, the set operations of these uh, operators they will remove all duplicates after their, after their uh, uh, operations have been performed. So no duplicates in a Q1 union Q2 query. No duplicates at all in any of these, uh, in of your, any of the results of these operations if you remove the all modifier and end up with set operations. All right, so let's switch over to the terminal and see how that goes in practice. Uh, in the core of SQL.SQL file, you will find a few sample queries that also talk about the pocket bag and set operations. Um, regarding the compatibility, the matching row restrictions, I've, uh, I've added a few lines here that will clarify what, uh, what these restrictions uh, mean for the participating tables. The row width must match 
the field types must be at least compatible so be castable into one another and uh, if the row field names the field names in the left hand and right hand side arguments differ then the left hand side the first argument determines the field names as you will see when you start playing with these operations so I brought a sample query here. It's a union all query, of course, based on our playground table T. And as you can see, the left hand side and the right hand side arguments of these union all operations are entire select from where blocks. So union all really assumes a top level syntactic place inside your query. Inside. So uh, in this particular example, the left hand side arguments contributes all rows in which the boolean column TC yields true. Uh, the right hand side argument yields all those rows where the argument, the, the, the Boolean um, value of column TC evaluates to false. So together, together, because there are no null values in column C, together these two query blocks contribute all the rows of, of table T and we expect this union all to, uh, to then really reproduce the entire contents of table T for us. Let's see whether this works. We expect five rows to be uh, produced here. Okay, so these are the five rows of table T produced in some order, but order doesn't matter in this case. Uh, the union or the back operation really has done its job. So let's think about uh, what happens if we switch from back to set semantics. And uh, this is easily done in SQL. Uh, will we see a different result in this case? Uh, now duplicates would be removed after all throws have been thrown into one pot. Are there any duplicates to be expected? No, there aren't. As you can see, we reproduce all the columns of the rows of playground table T. That includes the key column. And uh, the, um, no two rows, no two rows will agree on the key column. There will be no duplicates. So uh, there are no duplicates to be removed even after this union operation. So even this union operation in set semantics will yield five rows. As you can see, there are the five rows in some other order, but hey. Okay, let's switch to back semantics here. Uh, if we modify the query slightly, and the only modification, as you can see, has been that we are switching from T star here, T dot star to TB. So we are only reproducing the column B. The column B is the textual column in which all the uh, the B values are either the string X or Y. Okay, so these will contribute some X's and Y's. This will contribute some X's and Y's. Let's see what happens. Uh, normally, we would expect five rows here. And that's exactly what happens. So some X's are contributed, some Y's are contributed. Uh, so five rows, that's fine. Okay. Um, if we now switch to the set semantics, then of course, and obviously there are some duplicates to be removed. Uh, this X occurs three times in the result. The Y occurs two times. The union, the set semantics, will remove the duplicates after we have computed the, the union of the rows. So there will be only one X and one Y remaining. We expect a result of size two here, and that's what we get. So set semantics really makes a difference here at this point. Duplicates are being removed. Okay. I brought another modification of that particular query, another modification of this particular query in which I've added a field, a field Q that can, uh, that visualizes, that represents which of the two sides, the left hand side or the right hand side of the two arguments to the union all has contributed to the overall result. Uh, that should be um, visible now. So let's see. Okay. Nice. So the left hand side has contributed three rows. The right hand side indicated by Q2 here, the Q, the Q, uh, the right hand side has contributed two rows. In the end, we end up with five rows and back semantics. That looks good to me. Okay. So if we now switch over from union operations to the minus or accept operation, the difference operation, um, then we can, uh, uh, then we can use 
or later refer back to this to this to this result to understand what f effectively happens here so let's see uh, this is the left hand side the left hand side of the uh, of the of the back operation and as you could see it contributes x two times and y one time okay uh, this is the right hand side it contributes x one time and y one time okay according to the back semantics of the accept all we will perform a subtraction of multiplicities okay so if the left hand side contributes x two times and the right hand side contributes x one time then uh, two minus one one x will remain the left hand side contributes one y the right hand side contributes one y subtraction of multiplicities no y will remain so actually one x should remain here and no y should occur in the result uh, we should end up with one single row let's see there you go this is the one x uh, that is remaining in this particular case and uh, of course the union all and the intersect all uh, or and union and intersect operations both back and set variants are uh, commut commutative operations so left hand side and right hand side can be exchanged at will and the result will not change this is of course not the case for the accept all operation this is not a commutative commutative operation so i've uh, just reproduced this query with the left and right hand side switch over and this is what we end up with Okay, so again, the left hand side will contribute x and y one time, the right hand side will contribute x two times and y one times. Subtraction of multi multiplicities, no y will remain. Mm, minus one x, no, zero x will remain. This should be the empty result. There you go, zero rows. This is the result of a back operation, a back difference that uh, respects multiplicities okay so much for back and set operations very brief very nice uh, these are really fundamental operations um, and we will find them used again and again in our exploration of sql queries looking forward to do just that with you take care and see you soon